Liberal Fox News commentator Jessica Tarlov absolutely flattened the MAGA talking points of Fox News propagandist Sean Hannity in a heated exchange on his show, and we have to talk about it. But before we do, if you end up liking this video and you want to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and alert bells before you go. All right, friends, Sean Hannity is uh, one of Donald Trump's BFS, probably his strongest and most devoted surrogate on the Fox propaganda network, which is saying something, right, when you consider the fact that Laura Ingram and Jesse Waters and Janine Pirro are also on the Fox propaganda network. But Hannity is probably his most loyal soldier. Well, for whatever reason, he made the mistake of inviting on liberal Fox News commentator Jessica Tarlov, who is much smarter than he is and who has a much better command of the facts and is therefore, consequently, a Democrat. Um, And so they had a heated back and forth about uh, Vice President Kamala Harris, her record, the record of the Biden administration. And I want to play it because it's just so good. All right, Peter, thank you. Joining us now, co-host of the hit show, The Five, Jessica Tarlov, former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee. Uh, Jessica, I hope you heard my monologue. I went through, I won't I repeat everything, but, but our positions on immigration, on law and order, defund, dismantle, you know, no bail laws, and her position on energy, no fracking, no drilling, uh, her position bragging about Bidenomics, she's not bragging about it anymore, now she wants price controls, and then, of course, their foreign policy disasters, and, you know, don't say radical Islamic terrorism. Why are they running so hard, your party running so hard from who they really are and who they've been? Uh, Because I've never seen this before. Well, the Kamala Harris of 2019 wouldn't win this election, but the Kamala Harris of 2024, it looks like she has a very real shot at it. And I understand that we're still underdogs, and she acknowledged that today when she was out doing her Pennsylvania yeah, bus but tour. Jessica, but I don't mean she to has evolved you. I on those you a different issues. question. No, what is what? What, you, well, what are what are, what what are? No, no, this is important. I'm trying to get to what are her true beliefs because she only made these changes. As soon as she became the presumptive nominee, that tells me she's doing it for political expediency. Oh, that's true. No, it's not true that she's done that. She has been President Biden's vice president for the last four years, three and a half years. And the policies that they have enacted, and you take this for better or for worse, are policies that she's going to have to account for. But none of those policies are banning fracking. They were actually more drill baby drill than Donald Trump was. 13.4 million barrels of crude oil per day. Why was she bragging about Bidenomics? Why was she why was well, she saying, you know, that the border's secure? Is, why was she saying inflation's transitory? Why was she lying to us? She, she wasn't lying to you. Kamala Harris has made it clear that there is a lot about Bidenomics, as it was called, that there is to be proud of. Looking at the GDP rate, looking at the fact that we have lowered inflation, we're leading the world, actually, in how fast we've recovered. It doesn't mean the job is done, but it's a lot of progress. The jobs record better than Donald Trump's. The number of people who have gotten insurance under the Biden-Harris administration, these are all part of Bidenomics. Part she of wants the to Biden eliminate Harris private admin- insurance. No, she, she doesn't. Wants to that, you're taking she a wants clip from 2019. Healthcare. She wants it is. You will meet a lot of people oh, okay. who, in their heart, want universal health care, but understand that, was her. that you need to that have— That was her. That so what, in 2019, words. have you it's, ever heard it wasn't her Joe as vice Biden. president say— It wasn't the Biden policy. It was her policy. I'm sorry. That's what she wanted. She in said In 2019, it. I, didn't um, say I understand. It. I watched the clip. I understand. But if you talk to her <laughs> yeah. today about it, there is no way that she is going to say that she wants to eliminate private insurance. There's just no way. That's so why she'll say, expanding let, Let's be honest. Medicaid. All right, let me go to Mike Huckabee. Okay. She <laughs> will say and do anything. So, that's so funny. Um, Sean Hannity was desperate to pigeonhole her. And, and, and here's the thing. Let's, let's set the facts aside for just a second. We can get into that. It, they almost always favor us. But imagine being a Trump supporter. Imagine being a close associate of Donald Trump, a, a political supporter of Donald Trump. And let's just take everything he said at face value. Who are you? to accuse someone else of being a flip-flopper, of being inconsistent. Donald Trump is the most inconsistent politician we've seen in terms of the things he says. He does it all the time. He'll say something on Monday, contradict himself on Tuesday, have a third position by Thursday, and his supporters, his cultists like Sean Hannity, they don't care. It's just the cost of doing business. Ah, you can't take Trump literally. Yeah, he's a showman. He says what he says. He just speaks off the cuff. So it doesn't matter. You know, use abortion as the issue. Is he... Is he pro-choice or is he, uh, you know, pro-life? Well, it depends on who he's talking to. How much he's pro-life versus pro-choice also depends entirely on who he's talking to. Does he favor a national abortion ban in which he wants to punish the mothers? 
He said that. We have the clips of that. Sean Hannity would say, oh, you can't take him literally, or he's changed. But Vice President Harris can't do that. Vice President Harris, you have to take her literally, and her views must be fixed. Whatever she says in 2019 when she's running in a Democratic presidential uh, primary election is exactly the same, according to Sean Hannity, uh, as a 2024, five years later, uh, as uh, when she's in a presidential general election against Donald Trump. The asymmetry is ridiculous, and Jessica is just right to categorically refuse it. Like, no, her views have changed. And you can complain and whine about that all you want, but that's the facts, and facts don't care about your feelings. And let's get into the facts. I love how, again, Hannity, like every other Fox News host, is just desperate to pretend that there weren't meaningful economic accomplishments under the Biden administration. But there are, and I love the fact that she's rattling them off to his face. Hey, listen, jobs, that's a big one. More jobs created under President Biden than Donald Trump, even if you generously grade Donald Trump on a curve and don't hold the COVID pandemic against him, which you absolutely should because, well, number one, he was chief executive at the time. Number two, he didn't manage it particularly well. It's not like he gave, you know, his his best performance. It's not like he tried his best and it was still a disaster. That's different. If any president, Republican or Democrat, does their best, makes sound decisions, and those decisions are still inadequate, then we can I, I'm fine with saying they did their best, right? Donald Trump didn't do his best, or if he did, then his best is too inadequate to be chief executive. He didn't follow the science. He didn't, um, you know, use the bully pulpit to corral and rally his party to take the virus seriously and to use this moment in a national crisis as a unifying opportunity. He didn't do that. So we can grade him for that, too. Um, and the fact of the matter is if the shoe was on the other foot and it had been a Democrat in charge, if it had been President Obama and his tan suit uh, in charge of managing the COVID pandemic, Sean Hannity would not be taking it easy on him. Sean Hannity wouldn't be saying, well, it's a once in a century pandemic. We got to go easy on uh, President Obama. No, he'd be like, eh, tough luck. You're chief executive. You ran for this job. These jobs you know, uh, can potentially uh, operate under exigencies and, and, and extraordinary circumstances, and you have an obligation to solve it anyway. So we're, we're not going to grade Donald Trump on a curve. But even if you did, 90,000 more jobs created per month under Biden than Trump. Biden's just better at it. Lower unemployment under President Biden than Donald Trump. GDP growth, Jessica Tarlov mentioned. Donald Trump promised 6% GDP growth every quarter. He failed miserably, even prior to the pandemic. GDP growth, even if you control the pandemic, is under Biden than it was for Trump. The stock market. Hannity used to love the stock market. Oh, that was the ultimate. That was the most important macroeconomic metric, according to Hannity. Now it's not, because it's doing better under Biden than it did under Trump. Then, when the stock market dips under Biden, which it has sometimes, briefly, then the stock market's really important again. So you, you see what I'm saying? When the stock market's doing well under a Democrat, the stock market's not important. When it's doing poorly under a Democrat, it's very important. When it's doing very well under a Republican, it's extremely important. When it's doing poorly under a Republican, not important. That is the Hannity standard. I just love that Tarlov is so good at this. She's like, listen, and, and I agree that, you know, I'm sure that Vice President Harris um, has moral support for Medicare for all. She, But it may very well be the case that she recognizes that it's a political loser. That happens over the, the course of actually governing. I imagine most politicians in most parties probably have policy positions and prescriptions that they have backed away from because they recognize there's no political capital for it. And we can have that conversation whether or not you should pursue a noble goal even in the face of total defeat. I mean, personally, as far as I'm concerned, I think health care is a human right. I had to watch my mother pass away from lung cancer and during 49 years old and during that process there was a moment where she was terrified about how she would pay for her treatments and thank god between insurance and you know the community coming together that that issue was taken care of but it shouldn't have ever been a moment of stress for a woman struggling with lung cancer and there are people with even more tragic stories than that i think i'm with bernie sanders i think healthcare is a human right and if we have to tax the rich to make that happen so be it but the bottom line is this, even if you have that criticism of Harris, she said it five years ago, she's a different person now because she's governed at the second highest office in the land for five years. And again, the standard for Republicans is very different. Hannity would never quibble about this. He would just say, oh, this person has learned more. This Republican has learned more. This Republican has matured in their views, has transformed in their views. But because it's a Democrat, can't allow that. So listen, I, I think his criticisms obviously are incredibly bad faith. I would be much more interested in the good faith criticisms of a more progressive politician who, you know, might be frustrated that the vice president has backed away potentially from, um, you know, more uh, lofty 
healthcare ideas, but Hannity's criticisms are in total bad faith, and Jessica Tarlov was right to treat him that way and to relentlessly fact check him. Love to see it. I don't know why people make the mistake of trying to spar with her on the Fox Propaganda Network, but damn it, I'm glad they do because it makes, again, for great content. In the meantime, let me know what you think in the comments.